Rock and surf fishing has changed a lot in South Africa over the last few years, and that's mainly to the introduction of braid fishing, where we now use braided reels and grinders. Previously, we used to fish with mono line and multiplier reels. Due to us fishing with braid, we've ended up with a very mono type of trace. And um, this trace we can use for shark fishing and edible fishing, and it's all linked to a circle look. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make this trace. As I said, it's, it's a sort of a trace that most guys use, and for the new guys in the sport, this is the trace I would start off with when I'm fishing with braid. All right, obviously, when you're building a trace, you're going to build it for a certain purpose. So if you're going to target smaller fish, you can use smaller hooks. Uh, Medium-sized fish, you're going to use a 5 6 type of hook. And your bigger sharks, you're going to use big hooks. The trace I'm going to build here, I'm going to use an 8 size hook. And on our coastline, that is big enough for most of your bigger sharks and rays and edible fish. I'm going to use 120 or 150-pound nylon-coated wire. And um, the trace, when it's done, is between a me one meter and 1.5 meters long. As I said, also, you, you've got to look at applications. If we're fishing for big sharks, like regular sharks, we make the trace as long as possible. But just for general fishing, I'd say your trace should be about 1.2 meters long when it's done. Okay, so we're going to start off, we grab our hook. I said I'm going to use the 8 size hook for this trace. That's really the most common size that I use for general fishing on our coastline. Circle hook, we've, we've gone this circle hook route for many reasons. Number one, your hookup rate is very good. The hook mostly ends up in the corner of the fish's mouth, in the scissors there, so you don't damage the fish at all when you release it and they also don't get stuck it easily. So fishing in reefs, the circle hook doesn't get stuck and you don't lose that many traces. Right, so the first step is to obviously attach our hook to our steel trace. Right, so we attach our hook by a very simple loop knot. Two, three, four. Five times over the shank and then very important, you put your seal through from the back end of the hook. Pull it through and pull it tight. And the reason for that is you always want your wire to face down. So you're forming a perfect circle. So when the fish picks up your bait, the circle hook can do its job and slide into the corner of the jaw. Often guys make the knot wrong and the tag head comes out this side and the hook's action is wrong and it can't do its job. So it's very important that you put this wire through the back of the hook so it comes out the front and you're forming this circle action which helps your hook to work. You catch a fish, it'll just slide into the corner of the fish's mouth. All right, so we've got a bit of a long tag end here and you're just going to take your side cutters and cut that a bit shorter. Right, so step one is done, hook's attached. The next step we want to do is we want to put a little crimp on our steel. This little crimp is going to act as a stopper to st where we're going to have a sliding swivel and the swivel is going to stop against this crimp. All right, so in the middle of our steel trace, we're going to attach a crimp Slide the crimp over your steel. I normally work sort of approximately in the middle of my trace. And then you just take our side cutters and we just pinch the crimp onto the nylon coated. Obviously you don't want to overdo it because you'll damage your, your nylon coating and it can break there. So you just pinch it on nice and firm so it can't move up and down. And there we go. Grimp is nice and firmly on that nylon coated wire now, can't move up and down. 
Our next step is going to be to attach our sliding swivel with our circle hook trace. You don't want the fixed swivel. You just want that fish to pick up your bait and give him a bit of time to swallow and chew on the bait and get the hook in the right position. So that's why we've got the sliding swivel. As he picks up the bait, he's got that half a meter or a little bit more to swim, get the hook in the corner of the mouth, and as soon as he goes away with you, tightens up and who catches him in the right place. All right, for this process of putting our sliding swivel on, I've got a small little three-way swivel and three beads. And I start off by putting one bead onto our, our steel, and I put my swivel on through one hole of the swivel, a bead in the middle, through the second hole of the swivel, and then our third bead on the other side of the swivel. Basically, when we're done, that's the end result. We've got our three beads. One on either side of our little swivel, one in the middle, and it's a nice smooth sliding swivel. And the reason for the bead is, number one, to stop against our little sleeve we put on, and the beads also prevent your steel trace from pigtailing or kinking when you reel in and there's a bit of tension on the swivel. All right, so we've got our little sliding swivel attached to our trace. And then our third and final step is just to attach a swivel to the end of our trace and this swivel will be attached to our leader line going to our braid. I like to use a nice strong swivel for my shark traces. Obviously, you don't want the swivel to part when you're fighting a big fish. And I'm gonna use a number 1-0 power swivel. To attach our swivel, I just use a simple figure of eight knot, two loops over the back of our steel, push it through the back, form a figure of eight, take our pliers, grab the tag in, just pull it tight, pull it nice and tight on the steel. Slide your figure of eight knot down to the swivel. Get nice and firmly on. You can grab your pliers. Tighten the knot, and that's perfect. Cut off the tag end. Right, so that's our trace, as I said, very simple trace. Most guys use this type of trace now for fishing these days. But our circle hook, attach the right way around so it forms a nice circle. Halfway up the trace, you've got this little stopper. Some guys even take nylon and make a knot there. They take like one mil nylon and make a knot so it doesn't move up and down. I'm lazy, so I use the crimps. Above our crimp, we've got a bead through the swivel, a bead in the middle, through the swivel, a bead at the top. So you've got those three beads, and they can slide up and down, up to our top swivel, so it's a semi-slide trace. To the third eye of our swivel, we attach our sinker line. Make sure your sinker line is at least 20 centimeters longer than your hook line. And there we got it. A universal trace used by most rock and surf anglers in South Africa at the moment.